<laughs> How do you go about smoking the grain? And the first obvious choice you need to make is your grain. So what are we smoking? Straight up malted barley. Okay. What do we do with this? Uh, we're gonna open it and we're gonna scoop it on the tray. Okay, so how much are we putting in here? I tested it, this will hold about three and a half to four pounds. And we don't want the layer too high yeah. or else the smoke won't get through all, to all the grains. Okay, so you guys can see there are screens, just simple basic wood frames. This is uh, like a screen door material. So you can have the smoke coming from the top and bottom. Yep. And how high are we putting this? Uh, just under the top of this frame. Just spread it around? Yeah. It's about a knuckle. So now that we have the grains spread out, we need to prepare the grains so they're ready to absorb as much as much as that smoke as possible. To do that, we need the grains to be... Just a little bit moist. Yeah, and to your point, Kyle, this isn't like really wet, it's just... No. Just enough so you could actually smell the sweetness coming through. Yeah, you really can. Just that little bit of moisture completely changed the character in the room. And you will notice right back in here, there's a hole in the wall. That's where the smoke's gonna be coming in. Super high tech. It does not get more advanced than this. So we've chosen our grain and we've wet the grain. Now we're gonna choose our fuel. This is what's gonna be giving us the smoke. This is Irish peat. This is thousands of years of vegetation and moss and detritus just kind of piling on top of each other. And then they carve it out of the earth. Yeah. Hardly any smell to it. Oh, it's nice. Have you tasted it? But. <laughs> <laughs> So traditionally across the pond, they're using peat uh, because that's what they had access to. They didn't have a tremendous amount of trees. But in America, in the States, things like hardwoods, like mesquite or hickory, fragrant fruit woods like apple and cherry. Already we can see the smoke starting to billow out of this. How many more do we want? Let's do eight. Eight. Yeah! <laughs> No, we're good. We don't need more. <laughs> we're gonna get this sealed up for now. How long, Kyle, will this smolder before we can throw on some more bricks? Uh, about three hours, I'd say. The next morning, we got Kyle. It's been very smoky out here in the parking lot for a while, so I think we got some good flavor in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that is strong. <laughs> We're gonna let it air out. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it's starting to yellow. So we're gonna let that air out and then we're gonna do what? Uh, we're gonna mill half of it and that'll be a 50% Irish peat. Yeah, just a little tangential side experiment for all the MBs in the Patreon. They voted on an Irish whiskey. So we're gonna throw in some smoke on a little, little experiment and see how it turns out. Wow. That's... Probably be like a... How many bricks have we put on there? Eight bricks. Eight bricks and it's always... Yeah, that's what did it burn overnight. Okay. So I just relit it. Nice. It just burns down to absolutely nothing very slowly over time. So we've aired out the smoke shed. Now we're gonna go through, we're gonna collect all of the smoked grain. And we're just gonna dump these into the bag and take it over and get it milled up. So what are we looking at right here? So we got the 23 pounds of raw barley, so unmalted. Unmalted. And then this is the 23 pounds of smoked malted. Yep. And our uh, five pounds of wheat. Okay, that's our, the accent grain. That's our 10% accent. Nice, that the MBs and the Patreon voted on. So, this is the mill? Yes. You just dump it in and grind it up? How does this work? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go fast because this is pretty hard grain. This Texas grain is pretty hard, so I'm gonna go full speed. Yeah. Nice. That dinky drill works surprisingly well. Yeah. Pick that up, what do we have? Hell yeah. That is milled and that is ready for the mash. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Oh. Yeah, then it gets fermented and turned into water. Wheat, heated, raw, and malted. Yes. Got it. What's the next step? Uh, we're going to add it to our strike water. Okay. And once all this is in our hot water, it's gonna, the whole thing is gonna cool down to about 152 degrees. Yeah. And the enzymes are gonna get to work. Nice. 
Now it's going into a very specific temperature of very warm water. Why is that? Uh, the enzymes like a very specific temperature. Yeah. So we get as much alcohol as possible. So we'll check back in on the morning, see how we're doing. Yep. All right. It is a random Tuesday morning. Fermentation is now finished. We just need to put it into a still. I want to see what the smoky wash tastes like pre getting distilled. Kyle just poured me a sample of the wash. <laughs> Regretting it a little bit. Wow, the smoke is so intense. The character, like the, the exact flavor profile of that smokiness is gonna change every step of the process. We're getting almost uh, a campfire meets a Texas pit barbecue when it's in the smoke shit, that Irish peat. Then it gets into this, and wow, it just becomes a lot more, how would you describe that? Uh, malty. Malty, yeah. So weirdly, Alex asked for a specimen this morning. I'm not really sure. <laughs> All right, fine, I'll try it, I'll try it. So malty, that smokiness is almost kind of a funky, almost earth, yeah. Oh, definitely sweeter on the taste. Beer bitterness. Check in the ABV. I'm gonna guess uh, 6%. There's the barrels. 10%. 10%, hell yeah. So the next step is we get the still running. 90 minutes, we'll come back and check on it and stand around and look like we do hard work for a living. Quiet. Quiet. Just, hey. Wednesday morning, Wednesday morning, we have the stripping run done. We're gonna combine everything from the stripping run. Go back in. Now we're gonna do the spirit run. So that wow, it's very, it's like stale beer. Yeah. Whenever we're gonna do the spirit run, the smoke is gonna live on the lower end of that run. It's gonna live in the tails. So during the stripping run, we just wanna get every little bit of alcohol. We don't want that smoke hiding anywhere. We want all of it. Now we're gonna get to be choosy with the flavors once we do the next part of the process. This is proof. What do we got? So about 21% alcohol. All right, now this is where it gets fun and interesting. Kyle is saying he's gonna go past the alcohol and into the water that's getting left over. It's called the sweet water. Why do you wanna check out the sweet water and pull samples from that? It's good to save smoke and it'll work for cutting the heart stout to barrel proof. Okay. And it won't have any of those funky tails things into it. Oh! Oh, you're blowing my mind. So the smoke lives in the latter part of a distillation process, even getting down into the leftover water. There's gonna be a lot of smokiness in that water. And if we're going to be proofing that spirit into like a barrel entry proof, we're gonna be proofing it down. You're saying we might as well use the water that's carrying a lot of that smoke. I'm so weirdly like hard right now. Are you seeing anybody? At this point, you've probably had hundreds of different coffees in your life. But have you ever had coffee that was specifically chosen for you and your preferences? The cool thing about Trade is they have gone through and sampled with their expert tasters thousands of different coffees from some of the nation's best roasters. They've taken all of those samples and they narrowed it down to a few hundred of the absolute best coffees in the business. So with Trade, you're gonna go to the website, they're gonna ask you a few questions, and these coffees are gonna come to you to your door conveniently as often as you want to explore just really interesting, great coffees that you are very likely to enjoy. Every time you get something new, you're going to tell Trade whether or not you liked it, you loved it, you hated it, and that's gonna give them even more information to make sure that that next bag of coffee is something you're going to like even more. We love it, we're exploring coffee pretty much daily here. So you wanna go exploring in the big wide world of coffee yourself, you're gonna to go to drinktrade.com slash whiskey tribe. You're gonna get $30 off your first order plus Free shipping, it's really good. So we're talking about smokiness and where that flavor lives in the whiskey making process. The spirit, as it's coming off of the still, it's in three phases. You have the heads first, then you have the hearts, then you have the tails. The first thing coming out of that still, that's gonna be the four shots, it's gonna be the heads. It's not a lot, but you wanna separate that from the good stuff. Eventually you're gonna get into the heart cut, and that's basically where the flavors are going to be the nicest. And then after you get past the hearts, you're getting towards the tails. That's where it's kind of tricky because the smoky, the smoky parts of that spirit are gonna be living closer to the tails, but you do not wanna get deep into the tails. Then it'll be like a gross, weird whiskey. So that's a judgment call on behalf of the distiller and the tasting team to make sure that it all works out very well. I'm gonna pull 30 and then I'll show you the comparisons, yeah? The heads. That's the heads. Hearts. Tails. Keep in mind, 
Yeah. When you distill and make cuts on a pot still, it's not solid. It's not like we're pulling a chemical at a time. There's a whole bunch of things all running together with high boiling points, then lower boiling points, yeah. then lower boiling points. But like ethanol is across the board. It's more like certain, a gradient. It's a gradient. Yeah. And so when you're making your cut on a gradient, it's like, well, how far into the rainbow do I go this way or this way? That's the you heads. can already smell in the heads like the things that you don't like. Yeah. Really it's, punchy. It's very acetone, almost a nail polish. Yeah, there's but there's still methanol. there's still a glimmer of like a little bit of a sweetness. There's, yeah, there's a glimmer of the sweetness to yeah. come. Now you get all of the fruit bomb, but because he cut so, correctly. Heads to hearts, we're in hearts now. Yeah, don't smell it. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. I didn't smell. You're not only gonna get the fruit bomb of malt, but he did cut low enough that there is actual smoke in there. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And it's you actually, can try that one, you'll taste really nice. it too. It, It'll linger on the oil. Does that have the four shots? Yeah, we yeah, you touch don't want that it. one, yeah. yeah. So I think all of the papaya and the nice light fruits, mm -hmm. but then also. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a very ripe pear. But then also a little ash. And this is where it starts to get wet paper. This is where we started to get into the not good yeah. stuff. But it should be even more smoke present than the nose. Vegetable, it's wet paper. Yeah. And even at this level, like mm -hmm. we, we're, it's not like we cut the tails out, we're holding the tails in our hand. Right. Even at this level, the smoke is harder to find, way more so than just that raw grain we had in our oh, hand. Oh yeah. yeah, already, even in the tails, it's still mild comparatively. So if you want smoke to show up in that finished whiskey, especially yeah. if you're gonna have age on it, you gotta really dump that smoke in. All right, it's time to taste the difference with the smoky whiskey. We did the peat shed, we did the Irish peat smoke, and then the only difference between these two, double distillation. Yes. And this one's smoked. Yes. This one's not smoked. Same grain? Uh, same grain, same still. So you do the honors. What do you think the difference is gonna be? I think it's gonna be kind of subtle. All right, smoky on the right. What are we gonna smell first? I would smell the non-smoked first. Okay. So this is what uh, ended up getting voted on for the Irish, the double distilled version. Okay, this is uh, the Patreon vote. Yes. All right, it's new makey, but oh, yeah. sweet. Uh, not as much of that butter scotch that I wanted, but mm -hmm. there's still some there. It's sweet and creamy. Mm. Are we trying it too? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got some. Fruity on. Yeah, on it's the a there. zestiness too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little sharp, Yeah, but pretty. Yeah, yeah what was the, the proof on? 148. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah. It's very, very high proof. <laughs> and then there's like a fresh laundry quality. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like some nice uh, subtle dryer sheets. That's what I look for in my uh, booze. Yeah. Okay, now let's do the smoky. Definitely got a musty. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's funky. It's, it's like mustiness. Basementy. To me, it's like yeah. Uh, yeah. instead yeah. of full on fresh smoke, it's more like the smoke left over in the furniture. In the peat shed, it's yeah. like this Texas barbecue meets campfire. And this is more of kind of like uh, the ash, the, the, the leavings of like a funky basement meets a little bit mm -hmm. of smoke that was, that, yeah, that you're smacking out of the furniture. It does kind of smell like like a house of a smoker, like somebody that smokes inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the ashiness kind of yeah. got cranked up. It robbed the sweetness from the first one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Completely. I don't like the way that smoke actually presented in this spirit. What are the adjustments that could be made to make sure that the smoke that we're finding is the kind of flavor that we want yeah. from the smoke? For adjustments, it's just more peat bricks in the shed, just okay. thicken up that shed with smoke and just go longer. And, and then, then once you have that collected, then it's gonna give you more options later in the process. Yes, and then also cutting the grains in half, uh, the amount that was on the sheet, so that the smoke could kind of get all the way through it. So instead of four pounds of grain, I'll do two pounds of grain on okay. the sheet. Okay, so a shallower bed. Yeah, shallower bed, and then we'll probably spritz it with water yeah. one or two times during the process, just so more smoke can stick to it. I think the obvious next step in the experimentation to really dial in this process, we don't do the peats, we do the meats. Meats. The meats. Yes. But we, you know, you got like the charcoal briquettes and the, like the, the hickory woods and mesquite and all of that, that's gonna color too much of the flavor profile. To keep it pure, just meat smoked? Yeah. I think we gotta power that grill with whiskey. Fortunately, we know an idiot. <laughs> hey, there's a man in here. Hey, wow. there's a man in here. Corey. All right, come check this out. We have a whiskey powered grill Ooh. in the smoke shed. We're gonna be throwing some meats on here immediately. Let's do it. This is a whiskey talk? powered grill. Yes. Cooking up some dirt. Put your dirts in there. <laughs> oh my god. So, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> spritzing out the incredibly high proof new make yeah. and the wild turkey. Whatever doesn't get burned is landing on us. So we're just getting peppered by whiskey mist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. 
So these are injectors from a Dodge Charger. Yep. We are using whiskey to cook the meat to give us the essence yep. of meatiness in the air in the smoke shed. Yes. If you want to see the build for this, check out Corey's new channel at Shed Logic. Yes. Shed YouTube Logic. Shed Logic. Link in the description down below. Corey, thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, let's feed each other hot dogs. <laughs> It's actually very hot. It's well cooked. It's got a little bit of that whiskey mist on it. It does. Yeah. It does. Oh, yeah. oh it's still misting. Let's turn it up. 